Uh, I've had a lot of discoveries this year. Ely, Minnesota was one of them, and this one here I have a feeling is going to be one of them. I've been to the Keweenaw many times, but I've never put my boat on this lake, and I've never fished this far out in Keweenaw Bay. I fished out of where the flowage comes out of the Portage Lake yeah. there, and then I've crossed and went into Willow Bay. Okay. But I've never fished the main superior, the main tip like this. I'm excited. <laughs> Today what we're doing folks is we're going to be going out on Lake Superior right at the tip of the Keweenaw so this the peninsula itself sticks a good hundred miles right out into the thick of the lake and we've got some of the best salmon and lake trout fishing anywhere in the world. The water is crystal clear, the fish are really feisty and we're going to go for mixed bag today. We don't care what we catch, we just know one thing, we're in a beautiful part of the world on an absolutely stunning day. Stay tuned for some great fishing. So what we're doing is we're gonna be lake trout fishing today and we're gonna start out by bumping the bottom. That's a tactic that a lot of lake trout fishermen use and that is, is to get your ball extremely close to the bottom so that as the ball moves a little bit, swings backward and forward, it will skip and actually cause the bottom to kind of the sediment to be disturbed and it'll, it'll physically hit the bottom. We're clipping our spoon extremely close. We've got an inline barrel swivel, snap swivel type thing and we're going right above that so that we don't get line twists, but that spoon's probably only six feet behind the ball, and the whole tactic is based on the fact that the lake trout come in when they hear and sense that ball hitting, and they're curious, and so when they come in and look at that, then the first thing they encounter is the spoon right behind the ball. So we're starting out here in 133 feet of water. We've got about 145 foot on our downrigger balls to touch first. And we're going to try a pass through here. And what we're doing is, is we're working a deep trough in between two solid structures. We've got the point here, we've got an island here. And uh, we've got just a nice deep trough. Now there's some current in here, so you got to be aware of the current and what it does to your baits. But that's our basic starting setup, so we'll see how it goes. Our guest today on the Keweenaw Show was Steve Urbish. And Steve is a local guide and been a long time resident of the local area and just does a great job fishing. A deep diving bare naked reef runner is what I'm running here. And I notice it's got like a colored reflection right through there. It does, it reflects lots of color from the sun. And it has different colors as it rolls. It I does. mean, it looks copper, then it looks blue. It has a purple hue to it. So what bait are we imitating here with this? What's uh, their main forage? Probably the smelt. The smelt? Yeah. Well, that makes sense. That looks a lot like a smell. We're running these, like smell. these high for uh, rolling morning salmon and things like that. Rolling morning salmon, um, possibly a steelhead, and the lake trout will follow the bait up high. Sure. All right. Well, good. Well, we'll try some high lines too. What we've got here today is the entire setup we'll be using today is made by Traxtex. And what that is is a company that makes trolling equipment. Our main mount plate is a five foot bar, uh, five foot track system. We've got our downrigger right in the track system. This is removable. We have our two dipsy rods right here. And uh, this is an electric downrigger and this is fantastic. Uh, we have our stop set set so that when you push the up button, once a fish hits and, you're, and someone's reeling the fish up, you gotta get the downrigger ball up to reset it. You can simply hit one button on this downrigger and it comes right up to exactly where it should stop and be ready for the next setup. And then when we drop it down, we also can program into this Trax Tech downrigger a target depth, which means once we identify how far out the downrigger balls need to be to begin to catch fish, we can just literally program our, down, our lower level, our target depth, right into the downrigger and it'll automatically go back to that. We don't have to sit and stand there and do it. We can literally just hit the button once and it will drop immediately down to the depth that we set. And that depth is changeable all the time. I mean, if we're catching lake trout at a certain depth close to the bottom and we decide to switch up and go salmon fishing and they're down 65, we can simply reset our bottom target depth at 65 and change our setup very quickly. So this is very unique equipment. It's totally durable. 
And uh, I'm telling you what, it's the top of the line, state of the art. We have tree systems for flat line board trolling. We have our adjustable dipsy rods, which are on a simple system where you just pull this. And though what's nice about these is you can adjust it just with the touch of a finger. And if you wanted to grab your dipsy rod and swing it out like that, it comes all the way up to high and then you drop it back in again. It's very, very high quality stuff. I've been using it and I love it. Great Lakes Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Lawrence Electronics, fish the finest. This segment is brought to you by Trax Tech, the ultimate fishing system. I mean, are, are these fish typically on the Great Lakes real spooky of the boat? That's plenty. I have about 100 feet out from the board to the rod. Okay. So and I think that's plenty. plenty. Now, if I was stacking up rods, I'd put that out 150 sure. and then put another 150 feet inside that. Exactly. Trying to, to get, get keep them nice away so that, so that you don't get a, a complete mess is what you're saying when, when something hits. Correct. There's a perfect example. Steve, we were actually setting, we were bouncing real aggressively because we were coming up that slope. Yep. And we, at, when you move these lines, many times you'll trigger a fish that's following. That's exactly what happened, is I came from 135 to 120, and you and I were just talking. And uh, that's, that was cool. I saw, all of a sudden, I saw my rod bounce, and I thought, you know what? There's no possible way. There's no possible way. That's a nice oh, fish. That's a nice fish. Yeah, I know it is. He hit it, guys, as we were setting, bringing our rigger rods up. Because as we came up the slope, you can't, obviously, you can't drag downrigger balls. You can skip them. You can't drag them. And remember that to whoever's driving the boat, somebody's got to be on the graph whenever you're playing this game here with Lake Trout, is you have to be on the graph. You've got to know where your balls are set. And I mean, if you come up 10, 15 feet, you need to be adjusting for that, correct, Steve? Yes, and you have to watch the rod tips because mm -hmm. the rod tip will indicate to you and you're gonna wanna move over yeah. and keep I'm it out of that other yeah, line. It's... But you're gonna, you're gonna wanna watch the rod tips because that'll be your first indication when that ball is bouncing on the bottom and it will bounce on flat seas like this. It's not quite as obvious, but when you got rougher seas, bigger seas, that rod tip will hit and it will straighten up and then yep. bounce back down again. And also be aware, correct? I mean, the other thing you gotta be aware of is Lakers don't always trip your release. That's true. And so you gotta be on your rod tips. You gotta keep enough tension on your rod tips to be able to see the shaker uh, that's just that's just pulling your uh, thing. This is a good fish, Steve. You have to pay a lot of attention to yeah, the rod Yeah, because tip. especially when you're doing, like you say, the, uh, the upsets, the downsets, you, You've just got to always be on it because those change of depths can trigger a strike and if you're not all over it, you might miss it. He's hey, starting to got... tire out, but he's got some good head shakes. This, this isn't the smallest fish in the lake is what we're gonna say. He's, he's getting close to you. I'm gonna squeeze around yep, here. squeeze right in there. Phil will get a good shot. I'm excited. Oh, there's the leader. First fish of the day. I love the angle of the line. When you get the angle of the line down like that, it's generally a bigger fish. Oh, what a beauty. Oh, wow. <laughs> My first Lake Superior fish. That's a gorgeous fish. <laughs> what a beauty. Steve, we got a fish that people would drive a long ways to get. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Isn't that a pretty fish? That is, the colors on that are phenomenal. And, and, and size-wise, what, what, what is that? Where does that fall? Is that I just a good, normal, average fish? This is just a little bigger than average. Sure. Uh, Fantastic eating, right? Oh, this size. gorgeous eating fish. Yeah. Very clean and pretty. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Well, we're going to keep a couple today for the frying pan or the oven or the grill. We don't know which yet, but uh, Chef Grant, I'm sure, will make us uh, make us a good recipe later in the show. Okay, see what we've got here? We've got the target depth of 120. That's where we had our last fish. And so all I have to do to get, achieve that is push the auto down button. Put the clicker on. And the track tech downrigger takes over from there. It goes in right back and mimics the exact depth that I just had that fish at. So I don't have to sit and think about it. I don't have to remember. All I have to do is push a button. That's fantastic technology that makes a big difference when the fish are happening. 
Now we're getting close, it slows down and it inches it right down to the exact depth, 120, 120. I put it in. You got another fish down there. I'm gonna have a little, little bit out. And we're fishing. And what we're doing is we're gonna definitely pay a lot of attention to our tips. Sometimes you'll see that tip is running nice and smooth, but when a smaller laker comes, that tip will dance and bounce. It'll almost look like a perch bite where it'll, it'll, it'll give real abrupt jerks. And obviously when you're pulling a spoon, abrupt jerks aren't gonna happen just from the action of the spoon. So that's an indicator that you got a lake trout on that isn't big enough to pull it out of the release. And that's where you get your rod out, you reel down and you'll go ahead and, and release it real extremely fast and maybe we can show you this if we get one on today that's doing that but when you encounter the fish at that point you still got to remember to go ahead and give it a good hard jerk or two to make sure that you get the hook set home 100 is good then yeah <laughs> what was the set two set one set i'm i had it on the two or three so you were really swinging wide i was right a nice head shape down there. Yeah, I mean, the way it pounded it, it looked like another nice laker. Oh, yeah. It's fun when you catch fish, isn't it? It is. I mean, look at the background. I oh, mean, yeah, we it's were a coho, sitting, a little coho. A little coho. I'll tell you, that's good eating, though. There's the dipsy. See how that popped? Everybody, you've got that snubber. That orange is a little, a little rubber snubber, and that takes some of the tremendous jarring out of it It'll that come these on. fish. No, he's just diving. He's diving, he's there. I'll tell you what, these are some really good eating fish. Right there. That's some oh, of the best eating fish What around. a beauty, I'll come your way. You're coming. That's a fantastic That's fish. That's a beautiful fish. And how do people, they, they typically just fillet these right off and then pull the pin bones out and bake them or grill them? I like to grill it. I like to coat it in just olive oil and lemon pepper right on the grill, and I don't think you can beat this fish. No, I, I agree. This segment brought to you by Ely, Minnesota. On the Boundary Waters Canoe area, Ely, one of North America's last pure wilderness experiences. Great Lakes Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Motor Guide, engineered for anglers. The Keweenaw Peninsula, one of the most fantastic things about visiting the Keweenaw is just the sheer beauty from being up at the tip of the Keweenaw and looking out over the, the steep bluffs and cliffs that are there to being to the towns and seeing the history and the mining and all of the things that, that made the Keweenaw was it, what it was early in our, in our country and in our state's history. And now all of that is almost frozen in time and you can go look at those things and you can experience life the way it really was back then. You know, aside from the fishing, the Keweenaw is also just an all sports paradise from hiking and biking in Copper Harbor and the paddling opportunities to the ATVing and snowmobiling that occurs very early in the season because of its proximity to Lake Superior and the immense amount of snowfall. This turns into just a place that you can go and have a great time outdoors year round, whether it's not just hunting and fishing, but it's ATVing, snowmobiling, biking, hiking, places like Copper Harbor, Eagle Harbor, and then the interior towns of Calumet and Houghton Hancock offer just great opportunities for outdoorsmen in general. We're on the tip of the T Keweenaw Peninsula and uh, I'll tell you what, I, I absolutely love coming out here and seeing the scenery, but now experiencing the fishing, it's ridiculous. One of the things I love about this Crestliner 2050 Authority is for a Great Lakes application, which is what this boat was built for, look at the room I have. I am standing in the middle of the boat and can't reach either side of the boat. You have a tremendous amount of interior fishing space, and when you remove the back two seats and move one of them up front, you know, we have three guys today, you've got just a tremendous amount of space. I mean, we're having no problem tending our rods, getting around, netting fish. You have tremendous space on your gunnels. They didn't clutter these gunnels up with stuff. They, they made it so a Great Lakes fisherman can put his stuff on there and have everything he needs, because that's one of the biggest things. If you notice today, 
we're fishing our trees, we're fishing our dipsy rods, we're fishing our downrigger rods all at the same time. And there are circumstances, multiple circumstances I can think of where that's the case. And so that's why you have to be able to run everything at once. And the space necessary to do that, this 2050 authority and its uh, bigger brother, the 2250 authority, give you all the space you need for Great Lakes fishing. There's the leader. Yeah, oh, I see him flipping back there. Nice one. Yeah, beautiful lake trout. Another one for Chef Grant and the griddle right there. We call those a breakfast fish. Yeah, good job, Steve. I mean, they're not huge, but man, do they eat fantastically. And that's just a normal, good eating lake trout size, correct? That's a right perfect there. eater size. Yeah, bouncing the bottom again. <laughs> you that, were setting it, it again. It just hit the bottom it and just it just hit the bottom and it popped. And it popped pop. out of the release. Oh, oh, oh. Now there you go, Steve. Well, we saw some fish down on the bottom, belly to the bottom. Oh, yeah tight to the bottom. And so I dropped that downrigger right down on the bottom. And just as soon as that ball hit, hit, it probably kicked up some silt and the line, this fish hit that lure. Yeah, just, and I saw it release just like you and you said, I got one. I yeah. thought you just touched bottom. Yep. Fantastic. It, it triggers them. If, if you're anywhere out of the zone with these fish, um, you know, a lot of times with, with when you're trolling, you you don't want to fish under fish. Lake trout are the type of fish that it's pretty hard when they're when they're relating to the bottom to fish under them because you can actually drop down and impact the bottom, bring it back up a foot, just sit there and hold it. And that that technique today and to basically all the time, Steve, isn't that probably the number That's one? That's the most prevalent way to catch lake trout. Exactly, it's bouncing, skipping, whatever you want to call it, but. Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by American Lodge and Suites of Calumet in the heart of the Keweenaw, offering affordable rooms, indoor pool, and tons of parking. And by Keweenaw Adventure Company, biking, paddle sports, tours, and rentals located in Copper Harbor. This segment is brought to you by the Copper Harbor Business Association, who invites you to explore one of the most beautiful places on earth and by the Mariner North Resort. Luxury log cabins and spacious motel suites will leave you relaxed and refreshed. All right, time to prepare the trout for our lemon pepper caprese salad. Start by having your grill really hot, then spray her down with whatever lubrication you use. I use Pam. And then a little bit of salt on your trout, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of garlic salt. Bring out all the flavor in it. Then lemon. A couple of them. That will get rid of any fishy flavor that's in the trout. And then last but not least, a little bit of oil. And then we're ready to throw her on the grill. Do the skin or the skin side up first. That way it ends, and you can you know play around with it, leave it on a little bit longer, and you're not going to burn the presentation side of the fish. Shut this up. Come back about three minutes later. It'll be ready to flip. Ooh, it's looking good. Nice and tender. See how it's splitting a little bit just what you want. A couple more minutes and she'll be ready. All right, time to take it off. There we go. There we go. Fresh trout ready to go with our salad. All right, here it is, our lemon pepper trout. 
with our caprese salad, with our fresh sliced mozzarella and tomatoes, some red peppers, orange peppers, yellow peppers, and mixed greens. Now to finish it off, we're gonna to top it with balsamic reduction. Just a little bit, not too much. There we go. Ready to enjoy. Yeah! Not a big one. <laughs> well, it doesn't I'm matter. Sorry. We're happy as a clam. It's all about the battle mentally of getting them to bite. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah, he's staying down. That's a better fish than I thought. Yeah, I think so too. I think he was coming with the boat. He was coming right up. I love that red braid too, because it helps you lock into where the fish is at. Yeah. Man, that is so much fun, Steve, to be able to just be able to see fish. It, it, it's not boring trolling. You're actually working. Right. You're actually doing something that has a real impact on the number of fish you're catching. Oh, that's a nice fish. I'll bring him to your side. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice fish. Here comes lunch. <laughs> yeah, that's a much better fish. Pretty, pretty fish. Beautiful. Yeah, oh, look at that. Look at the way the light's hitting that. You can just, there's like gold sparkles up on, up on the top on his skin there. Is that pretty? It's just exciting for me to come out here and experience this fishery. Well, Steve, that was a fantastic day on Lake Superior. Oh, look at these fish we got I know. Today. Well, Chef Grant's gonna have plenty of uh, ability to make us something nice to eat here at the end of the show. I wanna thank you, Steve, for taking me out here. This has been an amazing experience. I loved it. What a great day. It has. Well, thanks for joining us on our excursion here to the Keweenaw Peninsula and Lake Superior for some of this great fishing. If you want any more information, go to fishermansdigest.com. This is John Bergsma. Thanks for joining us today. Closed captioning provided by the quality ends of Escanaba, Manistique, and St. Ignace on US 2 in the Eastern Upper Peninsula. Here for your pliers. So basically, it's, it's everything you need on the side of the boat. You're not stumbling over stuff. 